Hey guys, it's Russ. Welcome back to Lawn Journeys. Nice to have you. Um, last year, I did my overseed in a two-part video. You can link to them above if you want to go and check those out. This is a new updated version. I'm pretty much doing the same procedure, but I thought that I would squish it all into one video and I'm going to try to compress it and not make it a uh, really long one. So stick around and I'd like to show you guys how I overseed my lawn. So my overseed process is a little bit intensive, but I'm gonna show it to you as I go through the steps. Now, I plan on doing this over a two-day operation. I have approximately 9,000 square feet, and my operation is as such. Step one is to lower your blade on the cut before you start this process. I like to start lowering my height of cut um, because we're gonna, the goal is to have a good seed contact with the ground. Step two, is I come out with my Sun Joe and I do a full thatch of my lawn. So as you can see, my Sun Joe, she's got some miles on her, but I have to say the thing is pretty sturdy, does a great job. And as I said last season, um, I did a series of videos on my overseed process and I have a video here which you can link to where I assembled the Sun Joe. Um, and I have to say for the price point on this thing, it does a phenomenal job. And the one thing I liked about the Sun Joe versus some of the other um, electric homeowner units is um, it, also, it has two blades. It has the uh, Thatcher and the Scarifier, and I'll show you both of them. Okay, so here we are looking at the innards of the Sun Joe Thatcher Scarifier. Right now, safety first, I do have it unplugged. Um, this is the uh, Thatch blade, and it's super easy to change. You guys can link to the video that I did last year. We were just talking about two bolts here, and this whole cartridge pulls out from the shaft. There is a scarifier that you can put in here that we will get to uh, momentarily as we go through this process. And it's quick to change the blade out. This is a 10 millimeter bolt and you can do it with a, uh, a ratchet set or even a, you know the screwdriver assembly that fits a 10, meter, 10 millimeter socket. There is a height adjustment um, built into the Sun Joe. Here it goes from zero to five to 10. Um, and then it goes uh, the opposite way, okay? So if you lower it, it'll go closer to the ground, obviously higher. Um, what I've found is depending on your height of thatch, you need to, um, you can pretty much eyeball it and determine what the proper um, height, uh, machine height is. All right, team, so let's get busy. I um, am gonna thatch my entire property today. I want you guys to see how the Sun Joe operates. It's quick, it's easy. And the one thing I like about it is instead of going down to the big box store and renting a uh, gas powered uh, thatcher that you got a whole home and you have four hour rental and you run around like a maniac, you buy this thing. Um, you know, if you get a season out of it, um, I think it's, it's worth, worth the money. But I mean, I'm on my second season and I've probably thatched my lawn. I did it last season and I've used a scarifier here. I've used a scarifier on another piece of property and things still down, it's a little electric motor. Um, make sure you get the appropriate um, gauge power cable. Um, I'll put a note below and you can check it out in the video um, because uh, you can overheat the motor which could damage it if you're not using the proper um, gauge uh, extension cord. Super easy to operate. Just make sure you don't run the cord over. Safety first. Basically, just walk in your lawn. I have it set at its lowest height. So I really want to dig into it with the tines. As you can see, it collects a lot of grass. And I'm pulling out the thatch. I don't want to pull out the good grass. But I want to pull out what comes out easily. the thatch layer. Hey team, so as you can see, got the initial thatch done. Gonna pick it up, get it out of the way. I'm gonna cut again at my lower height and then phase one is complete. Whew. 
All right, team. Remember, when you're using your Sun Joe dethatcher scarifier, practice good electrical cord management because you don't want to get zapped. All right, scarifying is done. Let's take a quick look. So what I want to show you is how the blade, the scarifying blade, put some grooves in the dirt. So we'll come down here. We'll come down here and take a little closer look. And if you get into the lawn, you can see all this stuff that came up. You can almost see the, the lines through here. So it's opening up the canopy and it's cutting some grooves into the soil. There's my pile of thatch thus far for an electric uh, dethatcher, scarifier. Thing's awesome. I mean, I think I paid, I don't remember, last year I got it out. I actually got this at Walmart. I think I paid 140 bucks for it. I mean, this is its second season. It's looking a little, looking a little worn. You know, it's been doing its duty. It's been working hard, just like me, just like you. All right, so uh, that's the story. This step is done. I'm gonna do a rake up. I'm gonna do a low cut, and then we're gonna talk about seed. All right, team. I'm a sweaty mess working hard out here. This, is, this project is not for the faint of heart. Overseeding is a major undertaking. So we did the scarification. I cut low. I bagged it. You should see my pile of grass. I'm going to show it to you guys at the end of the video. Um, what I'm doing now, it's time to get the GCI blue heat down. This is uh, a blend of three types of KBJ, and we're going to punch out of this video so I can sit down and tell you a little bit about it. GCI Turf Services Blue Heat Kentucky Bluegrass. Blue Heat is a three-way blend of high-quality Kentucky bluegrass seed consisting of Midnight, which is a unique Kentucky bluegrass cultivar, produces a dense fine leaf turf with dark green color. Everest provides an outstanding resistance against a wide spectrum of diseases. It's also dark green in color and new glade. It's an elite high performance dark green bluegrass. Okay, so now we know a little bit more about the GCI Turf Blue Heat. I had great success with it. I'm very happy with it. Um, I'm gonna start the application process. I'm gonna show you guys what the seed looks like. Um, I'm applying at an overseed rate of two pounds per 1,000 square feet. So let's check out the seed. All right, team, so this uh, seed is not for the faint of heart. Do yourself a favor, leave yourself a little bit. Um, don't spread it all, even if it's a cup. Because a couple days later, you're gonna find some bare spots that you're gonna wanna uh, do a little peat moss treatment with, and you're gonna wanna put a little bit more seed down. And if you're missing your seed, you're gonna be a little bit disappointed. So let's spill this out and then uh, take a look. Okay, let's take a closer look at this seed. I'll put it in my hand. And as you guys can see, this stuff, it's tiny. And it could take at least two weeks for this to germinate. And it's very light, which is why you don't want to mow the lawn again. You got to give it a couple weeks. And as you guys can see, I cut my lawn very short. There's still a little dry grass, some uh, thatch laying on top, but that's not going to hurt anything. The seed's going to go right through. All right, team, finishing out this seed. Some of my weaker areas. Put it down a little heavier. Got a little extra. Like I said, don't use it all. If you have a little extra square footage, keep uh, some extra seed. Because I guarantee you, you're gonna find a spot that it doesn't come in well. Um, you want to reseed or thicken it up. So, You'll be happy you saved yourself maybe a cup or two. This blue heat from GCI Turf Services held up very well in the summer heat. I'm tempted to go with the cool blue one year, which is a mix of KBG and some fescue. And if I overseed again, I 
think I may introduce a little fescue into my stand, but I mean, Kentucky blue is beautiful. Okay, team. Earthway 2600A spreader did the job. I spread 9,000 square feet, mostly on setting 12, 13 on that spreader. Um, I started off a little bit conservatively, um, so I had to open it up and I redid a certain area, but I just spread the whole thing. I have a little bit of seed left over um, for some of the tough spots. There's a couple of things. Uh, if you have bare spots, I recommend you use uh, scratch the soil up, use some sphagnum peat moss to maintain the uh, moisture. It'll definitely help it, and I have a couple of those spots. I was at my big box store this morning, and when you know, they were at peat moss. I don't know why. So anyway, I'll get it from somewhere else tomorrow, and I'll take care of those spots. Now, I'm not going to cut my lawn for two, maybe three weeks, okay? Um, it's very important to keep it irrigated. Seed needs to be moist. If you wet the seed and you let it dry out because you water it every other day, you're not going to have good germination. And it's, it's going to suffer when it does germinate and most of it or some of it won't survive. So here's the deal. What I do, I have irrigation. Um, I know how long it takes to put a half inch down. I'm not going to be watering a half inch a day, that's for sure. But I need to keep it moist. So if it's not going to rain, I'm going to put my irrigation on in the morning, probably about uh, 5 a.m. I'll run each zone for 10 minutes. That'll be my probably my long water of the day. I'll do a five minute afternoon uh, moisture application. Probably do that around one or two o'clock. And then I'll do a final water somewhere around 5 p.m., maybe six, depending on how hot it is. Because you do want it to, I don't want to have fungus in my lawn, okay? Um, I am still applying fungicides um, that will not impact the seed. Do not use uh, any kind of pre-emergent because you'll stop the seed from germinating, okay? Um, and I will be doing some bio stims such as root growth, root growth stimulant, um, aerate, uh, humic, and those things will be coming. So subscribe to the channel, like the video, uh, because I will be doing another video on what I'm doing to support my germination with applications such as fertilizer, and we'll talk about phosphorus. Phosphorus is good for root development, especially if you're seeding. And as I've said before, even if you are, if you haven't done a soil test, at least in New Jersey, you can apply a phosphorus fertilizer um, when you're seeding because it's considered starter fert. Um, I am phosphorus sufficient. You guys heard me say that before because um, I do a soil test every year. I will be doing an end of season soil test too. So another reason to like the video, subscribe to the channel, um, ring the bell, get those notifications. All right, guys, a lot of work. I was out here all day today. A couple neighbors stopped me, had a couple chats. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna do a quick irrigation uh, just to check all my zones, make sure they're working, make sure I didn't uh, damage any heads with my uh, uh, scarifying or dethatching. I'm pretty sure I didn't. I know where they are and uh, that's it. Get out there, get it done. Let me know how you guys overseed. Uh, continue to watch the channel because I will be showing uh, progress as the season, as the seed germinates and what it looks like. And I'll tell you what, this lawn is gonna be on fire come October. I mean, Halloween, I actually have, I have a special application that I'm gonna be putting down um, before Halloween. And this place is gonna be on fire. I'm gonna lay some stripes. It's gonna be incredible. So guys, I hope, you, I hope you come back, check the channel out. Help me out, ring the bell. I know I'm saying that a lot, but I'm, I'm also trying, I'm closing in on 1,000 subscribers, which in the YouTube world is kind of, uh, it's an exciting plateau to hit. There's a lot of guys out there that have tens of thousands of them. Um, I'm small time, but uh, help me get to 1,000. That's like uh, just the goal that I wanted to get to this year. So I know a lot of people from the analytics I watch, um, people watch the channel, but they're not subscribers. So just hit it, do me a favor. I appreciate it. At least, you know, some, something you guys can get back to me for watching my crazy videos. Um, that's it. So uh, like I said, get out there and get it done. And I'll see you next time on Lawn Journeys.